Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to the Chef Yusuf show where you will learn to cook the Islamic way. We will learn today the fundamental of making soup and we will make the most basic soup which is the butternut squash soup. Subhanallah, if you learn how to make this soup, you can make any type of soup. Allahu Akbar. This is my favorite type of soup because there is a hadith narrated by Anas bin Malik. This is in the Bukhari, so I will go ahead and narrate it to you that the tailor invited the Prophet ﷺ to a meal which he had prepared. And uh, so Anas bin Malik went along with the Prophet ﷺ and the tailor presented barley bread and soup containing gourd. Uh, gourd is a squash, uh, one type of squash that's like the pumpkin which is, could be translated to butternut squash. So he had the squash and dry meat and he saw the Prophet ﷺ picking up the pieces of the gourd and eating them and therefore the Anas bin Malik from that day he loved to eat gourd so inshallah this is why this is the soup is one of my favorite soups so inshallah while I prepare today's dish I'm gonna go through two things I'm gonna say the mentioning of uh, pumpkin or gourd in the Quran and also I will mention about uh, some of the uh, foods that resembles our body parts and what does that really mean so as you see I'm gonna show you some of the utensils that we need we need a knife a potato peeler a skillet the made ingredients, of course, the beautiful uh, squash, and uh, we need the medium onions or two small onions, two garlic uh, cloves, um, make sure it's diced and peeled, and uh, one or two, two tablespoons of cinnamon, or either to taste, salt and pepper, of course. Of course, we don't want to forget the broth, which is the most important thing in any soup. I will uh, prefer to have one liter, or up to thickness. And uh, we will not gonna forget the butter, of course. Two tablespoons exactly on the dot. And that's all. Exactly. Subhanallah. This is all we need for this soup. So while I prepare this soup, I'm gonna talk about the story. This is the story of the squash that is mentioned in the Quran. Did you guys know that? So there is a story of the squash in the Quran and the famous prophet, Jonah, son of Matthew, it's a translated English, is the person who lived inside the bush. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and take the squash, we'll go ahead and peel it off and we will cut it. So we'll cut it from the first half as you can see, and then we will cut that half, <laughs> you know, in half. And with a spoon, we'll go ahead and spoon off everything in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and continue the story, the story of uh, Yunus bin Matta. It's a very rare story in the Quran, by the way, and it's a unique. Uh, the Prophet nickname is Dunun, the friend of the fish, Sahib uh, al this prophet, he was sent to, to, the, to his people in Nainawa. Nainawa is a location right now located in Iraq. Uh, the number of his people were 100,000 or more. And he was sent to them and he wanted to call them to the truth. He wanted to call them to Islam, to believe in one God with the message. And he tried and tried for so many years. And as is usual, they threatened him. They threatened to kill him. So Allah gave the prophet to Yunus. He told him that the destruction upon his people will be coming to his people within three days so Yunus left him he was angry and the problem is he did not took the, pro the permission of Allah to leave them so he left and the destruction signs of Allah came upon the people and the people got afraid and the people you know they decided they came together and they said we should believe in Yunus because the destruction is coming so they start crying and started repenting and they start asking Allah for their mercy and for their for the help not you know so allah was merciful and he took away their punishment so as for yunus he didn't know that but he was already out of the city so he went to a ship that was very crowded with people and he sailed with them and the ship started you know shaking and there was a wave and a storm and the people in the ship they wanted to lighten up the ship so they started throwing up the luggages and everything and it wasn't enough eventually so they decided to throw some of the people to make it lighter so they cast a lot, and who is there, whoever name is picked, he will be thrown out. So the, the name of Yunus came up three times in a row. And uh, they decided to throw Yunus in the sea. Now I'm going to go back to the dish real quick here. I'm gonna, uh, what I did real quick is uh, I fried the onion with the butter, and then I added the garlic, and I cooked it for a few minutes until I smelled the garlic, basically. And I added the squash, and, add, and you know, cook it in high heat for 7 to 10 minutes. So to go back to the story, he was thrown in the sea and the big fish came and swallowed him. The big fish doesn't necessarily mean the whale. It could be any big fish. 
So he was swallowed, and Allah decided, you know, ordered the fish not to digest him. Ah, oh, Yunus was in the stomach of the whale. Imagine, three darknesses. Darkness, uh, you know, upon darkness, upon darkness. The darkness of the sea and the darkness of the night and the darkness of the stomach. So Yunus was alone and he started to thinking what he did wrong. So he started thinking and he started repenting that he left without the permission of Allah. So he started asking Allah for forgiveness. So Allah alam how long he stayed in the stomach. Some people say three days, seven days or four days. But his words was the most important thing. It was very important. No God but you. Glory be to you. Indeed I was wrong. So Allah responded to his account. La ilaha illa ant subhanak inni kuntum min al-zalimin. Anyone in any hardship, any darkness should do this dua and Allah will take the way, you know, make it easy for him inshallah. Because Allah said in the Quran, we will rescue the believer as it's mentioned in the Quran. Okay, going back to the dish, we will add the broth and let it boil approximately 20 minutes until it becomes tender and soft. Okay, going back to the story now. So what happened is the after a long period inside the fish, the fish came out. And Allah accepted the dua of Yunus and the fish threw them out in a place that no trees were growing. So Yunus alayhi salam, his skin was peeling off, his skin was burnt and he was not able to move. So Allah miracles happened and he grew a tree of yaqteen under him, a tree of gourd or yaqteen or pumpkin or squash. And the Arabic word is yaqteen. And the scholars spoke some of the reasons why is it particularly this plant. They said for three reasons. One of the reasons we could have three big leaves. And uh, this plant specifically kept the bugs away. And also it had very awesome smell actually. After he was healed, he was sent back to his people and all of the hundred thousand of his people were all believers. So why am I narrating the story? I am narrating the story because I got an email that says that there are some part of the uh, body that looks like food and subhanallah as if Allah is communicating to us that this part of the uh, food that looks like the body it's good for that body for example the carrot when you slice the carrot you look at it it looks like the eye they say that the carrot is good for the eye the tomato is the same thing it has four chambers and it's red the heart also has four, four chambers and it's also red and they say that the researchers indicate that the, uh, the tomatoes is, is good for the heart and the blood flow. Grapes, you know, it hangs in, in a cluster. They say it's good for the lungs. The walnut, it looks like the brain. And there is a research done that, you know, it helps the brain function. The kidney beans, of course, it's good for the kidney. And the celery, which I am 100% sure of, there are researchers that look that say that the best thing for the bones is the celery. And subhanAllah, you look at the celery, it looks like a bone. Even when you crack it, it cracks like a bone. The reason I'm mentioning this today is because I want to mention about this butternut squash and the story of Yunus alayhi salam. Now Yunus, he was ill in his skin. And Allah alam, this could be the plant that grew on him because the color of this plant, it very resembles the color of the skin. So I'm encouraging the brothers and sisters to do the study you know, to go ahead and make the study and help and benefit mankind and those people who need the cure for those diseases, inshallah. And uh, by the way, do not, please, do not email me about the bananas. I don't know what are the bananas are good for. So if you want to know, please ask a specialist. I am just a chef. Okay, after 20 minutes, the squash should be very soft when you squish them or when you squash them. At this point, we'd like to add the spices. And if you had it before, uh, just to let you know guys, if you boil the spices, it will lose some of its flavor, so we add it after. So now we will go ahead and blend the, the soup or the pieces of gourd. So we'll add half of the pieces of gourd in the blender. We'll add some of the soup in and we'll exactly half. Now remember guys, I want to show you something really important. Now the reason I'm doing this is because after I blend it, um, I want to show you, um, I want to show you how you can add the remaining chunks. And originally the soup, all of it should be blended, but with Chef Yusuf techniques and unique style, we're gonna show you how you have pieces of gourd inside this puree soup so we can eat it and practice it like the Prophet ﷺ did. And make sure guys, when you blend it, you know, open the steamer a little bit so the steam escape. After it's blended, it will look something like this. And we'll pour it in a plate. And two things to remember when you make blended soup. Number one, when the soup cools down, usually it'll be thicker, so keep that in mind. Number two, if it's too thick, go ahead and add some more broth and make it lighter as you wish. 
So now what I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm, I'm adding back the big barley chunks. So we'll go ahead and eat those like the Prophet ﷺ uh, did. And we add, of course, the maple syrup. This will have it, give it unique uh, flavor. After this, it will look like this. As we can see, it's half uh, pureed and half chunky. We can go ahead and eat it with our hands because that's a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to eat with our hands. And uh, the way the Prophet ﷺ ate this, he picked it up. And since then, Anas bin Malik loved this vegetable. And this hadith is very famous, by the way. You can you should see it in Bukhari, Muslim, and Majid, everywhere. So again, uh, you know, we do thank you for watching the Chef Yusuf show and enjoy this healthy meal. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.